things we can yeah, do to increase lot. insulin sensitivity besides fasting. So for a bodybuilder who wants to be as sensitive to muscle growth as possible, if you're, if you're constantly redlining this pathway, your body's going to become less responsive to it. This is the biggest pathway in the body. It doesn't respond just like a receptor that downregulates. Mm -hmm. It has so many receptors underneath it. Fasting yeah. protocols. How do we make them more effective so that we can fast for shorter periods of time, but get the same benefit of extended fasts? <laughs> Now in the Train With Tony coaching program, we do this with clients all the time. We have protocols for it. So we're not gonna go through this long list of things that we do for fasting, but there's a certain element of it that may be the most important part. And that is, uh, and this is not something we use for every fast, but this is like the most extreme thing that could be done on a fast is using rapamycin. So I used rapamycin recently. And Leo, you have some knowledge on rapamycin. You go first. Yeah, so the, the most important thing when you're doing an extended fast, you could do short fast, like a two-day fast or one-day fast, which I have some bodybuilders do like a weekly to, ins to sensitize themselves to insulin. So basically it's to un uh, unmake yourself a diabetic, to avoid diabetes and metabolic syndrome. You can do these short fasts. But there's been popularized in the last few years extended fasts like in humans, like a week long or five days long, can give you some of the benefits of having what's called uh, caloric restriction throughout life. Instead, you don't want to always be hungry. There's actually a society of people that do this. They're called the Caloric Restriction Society. Yeah. They're all skinny, they're always cold, and they're suffering. See, that doesn't, that doesn't appeal, right? I don't want to restrict my calories and be small and skinny. I want to be big and muscular, but I also want the health benefits of caloric restriction. So what we do is we take the caloric restriction and we compress it into a very short period of time and do the most extreme thing, which is fasting. But we, I would never fast natural. I would always take supplements during fasting to, 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 so that like a two day fast is the equivalent of a seven day fast. And so I burn more fat and I preserve more muscle. And so there's like an extensive protocol, but the, but the mTOR pathway and the rapamycin yeah. is the most important for the health and longevity side. Exactly. So, so basically the reason why you would do this extended fast is that when your body's in a growth phase, when it's, when your body's eating, it's in a growth phase. And when it's in a growth phase, you can't really cellularly repair yourself very well. Like there are many pathways that are not activated, like AMP kinase, for example, which metformin works through. For example, metformin, if you've heard of that, it's a fasting mimicking drug. So what we're gonna mention here is this. Sometimes I used to mention to people, if you wanna get more out of your five day fast, because how would you know when the fast works, by the way? Your blood work will show it. So for example, one example is your uric acid levels will rise. Usually this takes about five days or so, sometimes seven days if a person is very full with, with glycogen because they've been eating a lot of carbohydrates. So one thing you could do is remove carbohydrates a few days before go into a ketogenic diet so that you don't have to burn through all those carbohydrates to get into the point where your body feels starved. Another way to do it though, if you don't want to do that, is to take the drug called rapamycin. Rapamycin is the reason the mTOR pathway is called mTOR. It's a mechanistic target of rapamycin. Rapamycin is a drug found in the soil actually in that. Mammalian, I think. No, mammalian? No, no, it's me mechanistic or mammalian, it depends. It, there's a couple of names for it. But anyway, the important thing is that rapamycin at five milligrams or so, which is a slightly higher dose, taken once, will almost shut off the mTORC1 pathway, the complex one. So what you could do is, and I do this whenever I used to fast, I don't fast now obviously, but recently I haven't been fasting, but whenever, but I don't look like it at all. But remember guys, if you've been watching my channel, remember when I used to be very skinny? I used to fast every month for five days. It got really, it got really tiring for me. So I realized at some point I could take five milligrams of rapamycin the first day and get into that thing within three days or so. So I could just do three days, for example. There's other things you could do. Anything that stresses your body out cellularly during the fast, will cause more of, not anything, but most things, like for example, even thyroid medication or clenbuterol, they'll all make this, this stress pathway go on more and your body will start to repair. But the most important thing I wanna mention here is this one trick, five milligrams of rapamycin on the first day. But be careful, if you take it too often, you might get like sores in your mouth. That's the main side effect. I'm not telling everybody to use this drug, I'm just mentioning that this is a hack for your fast. Now, so why would we take it for one day and not every day during the fast? Because it lasts five days. The problem is if you block mTOR, you can't build muscle and there's other drawbacks to there's, blocking mTOR. There's another problem. The main problem is that if you take it too many times, you'll block mTOR complex two, which you don't really want to block. That's not the uh, same kind of thing. It it's actually has negative effects in your body. So the issue is what dose can you use for how many days without blocking mTOR two? And most people think now it's about two to five milligrams once, not five milligrams two days in a row, that's a bit too much.
So that comes at the very beginning of the fast, and that puts our body into a fasted state as far as the mTOR pathway immediately instead of having to wait. And then you're, it's like the pendulum theory. You know, when we're trying to mass blast, we're maxing out mTOR, which only works if your mTOR pathway is sensitized, right? If, you're, if you've already been blasting a while and then you do a mass blast, you're not gonna get much out of it. But if you, just like in a bodybuilding show, you starve yourself a little bit, not in order to get a rebound of how much weight you gain, but to resensitize the body's pathways for growth. You swing the pendulum back towards fasting, the body gets very hungry, wants to grow, resensitizes the mTOR and other muscle building growth pathways, and then you swing it the other way and mass blast and get huge because your body's so hungry and it wants it and the growth pathways are sensitized and they work better. So like the, yeah, the, the rapamycin is the way to swing the pendulum all the way to the extreme fasting. Like, like in just five days, it's like you fasted for a month because you've swung the pendulum so far in that direction, but during a compressed period of time so that we don't have to be like starving Ethiopians all the time for, for health and longevity. I'm not completely sure that the mechanistic, the mTOR pathway is resensitized. I think that the growth you're talking about is mainly from insulin sensitivity, which will also come from fasting for sure. But I think that's the main issue. That's why I have bodybuilders fast like one day a week, always, and then like three days in the month. Not everybody does, nobody does it actually. They, ref they all refuse to do it. They, they refuse the three days. But fasting for 24 hours once a week is a really easy way to not have to swing so often. Yeah. So you can have a longer blast. You know? I'll go into a little bit more detail on why I say resensitizing the mTOR pathway, whether it's true or not. It's a theory that Coach Trevor had and Coach Trevor is still the most brilliant underground bodybuilding chemist I've, I've ever met. Um, with a combined knowledge of pretty much everybody I've met in the industry in, in one person. And he was, uh, he would emphasize how important it is to resensitize mTOR. He would say that if you're redlining mTOR all the time, your body would start resisting growth. And if you resensitize it through fasting, this is before rapamycin, because I don't actually coach Trevor did talk about rapamycin a long time ago, but nevertheless, we, we didn't, we didn't use rapamycin on clients back then. What we did was use a little bit of fasting here and there. And when you fast, it's not just the mTOR pathway, it's the insulin pathway and a whole bunch of other pathways. So whether he was right, whether it was the mTOR pathway or not, certainly there was this rebound effect that you've all experienced who've done bodybuilding competitions. When you diet down for a competition, and then after the competition, you, you eat more calories and you go back to growth mode, then your body rebounds and you build even more muscle than if you didn't compete in the first place. And so mTOR was one of the pathways he sought to to resensitize by giving the body sh short but intense breaks away from growth. And, and the reason that came up a lot is because, because uh, supplement companies will say, ah, this, this activates mTOR, so this is gonna give you muscle growth. And Coach Trevor says, yeah, but the problem is if you're constantly taking supplements, you're constantly eating protein, like branch chain amino, amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, if you're, if you're constantly redlining this pathway, your body's gonna become less responsive to it. And another way it came up was branch chain amino acids because people were like, let's just take BCAAs all day, every day, and we're activating mTOR constantly. And Coach Trevor would say, that's a complete waste. BCAAs are a complete waste. In fact, it's negative because you're activating mTOR, but you're not giving your body the protein that it needs to build during that time. And so you're wasting your shot. You're like taking this shot to increase mTOR, but you're not giving what it needs and you're desensitizing that pathway for other times when you could have been more sensitive to that pathway and actually gotten muscle growth out of the protein you're eating. So he was saying, instead of taking BCAs by themselves, if you're ever gonna take BCAs, just take them when you're having a meal that might be slightly deficient in these so you can get more of an mTOR effect, so you can get more muscle building out of the protein that you do eat when you're eating more complete proteins. For example, vegetarians, when they're having incomplete proteins from their vegetarian food, they can sometimes add something like a BCAA, which activates mTOR more and makes use of the proteins that they are getting in. I disagree with almost everything you just said. So well, this is a great research yes. assignment. We should go into depth. It's already like, researched. Does... I, I have the best video on protein on the internet. So, so I, what's... I've reviewed all of the so research. So what's the exact BCAAs? research topic then? So no, the, the topic you're talking about now is the BCA part. Yeah. I have a video, uh, you search Leon Longevity Protein, you'll find... So you the, like BCAs? No, it, it's not about like or not. I don't like muscle in the first place. I don't try to gain muscle, I want to live long. But leucine is, you, first of all, the, if you want to know about the, the BCAs, they affect uh, people differently. So there are, there's some that increase mTOR, there are some that insulin sensitize you. 
And there's a reason not to think of them as building blocks. This is a mistake bodybuilders think of. They think you're, at, you're accumulating proteins and building muscle. The most important thing is that growth pathway, which doesn't turn off easily. That's not, that's not true. I don't know why he thinks that, but let me tell you something. I don't speak just from research. I fasted more than anybody. I know that when I fasted too much, what would happen is sometimes the mTOR would be stayed, turned off. And you could t tell this by, the, you would feel like depressive thoughts because the neurogenesis turns off in the brain. And sometimes even if you're taking SSRI, if you fast too much, you can feel that brain fog goes away, the neurogenesis goes away, the, no the anxiolytic effect reducing anxiety goes away and lasts for like a couple of weeks after the fast. So I know that you can turn it off hard and it doesn't like, doesn't like recover in that kind of way. Whereas when you take things that increase mTOR, sometimes you can see that it increases more. Like with neurogenesis, the longer you're on the SSRI, the more effective it feels. And there's other drugs, of course, you can tell this from. What I think Trevor has made a mistake with is mi mi mixing the insulin sensitivity with mTOR. There's no reason to think, I mean, David Sabatini is the leading researcher in mTOR. He's never mentioned that I know of. There's a resistance to mTOR being activated. It's the opposite. That thing works too often. We need to turn it off. So there, you don't think there's any such thing as desensitizing the mTOR pathway? No, I think insulin sensitivity is the main reason bodybuilders stop gaining muscle after a while. But I'm so, not a bodybuilder and I so don't So it's, it's, not, it's not healthy to have mTOR activated all the time. Our body is supposed to go through times of, of fasting. It's more natural. Uh, but for a bodybuilder who's willing to compromise their health in favor of gaining as much muscle as possible, you're saying that a bodybuilder could redline mTOR for long periods of time. They're not going to desensitize that pathway. It may even upregulate and may even get more out of the mTOR pathway. Potentially, but I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think that the pathway. This is the biggest pathway in the body. It doesn't respond just like a receptor that downregulates. Mm -hmm. It has so many receptors underneath it. And it's not just about muscle building. Also, it's just that it is a main pathway for muscle building, but it does so much more in the body. Yeah, but the, the real reason we're talking about this is for the health reason of extended fast. If I was a bodybuilder who wanted to die young and didn't care about long fast to avoid cellular damage that occurs around the body that the body doesn't remove, I wouldn't fast like that. I would fast like a day a week, maybe 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 not more than that, maybe two days a month, something like that. But what, yes, and that's and that would be how we fast with Coach Trevor also. Which that doesn't just, turn just off just once in a while. Unless you use rapamycin, two days will not turn it off. Not fully. Right. Not fully. M to, uh, rapamycin is how we swing the pendulum to that extreme, but still resensitizing by giving short breaks from mTOR stimulation. Well, if you use rapamycin, uh, it will turn it off yeah. in two days, probably. I mean, I have seen my blood work get that way in like three days. I've never really checked two days in. I don't, I don't know if it would, but I don't think that, that, that the mTOR is the reason that that fast is making people grow more. So take a bodybuilder, doesn't care about health, just wants to get huge. Don't give them any breaks from mTOR. Just give them breaks for insulin sensitivity. Yeah, give them breaks from food so they get sensitized to food. Not the break from the growth pathway. I don't think that, that I, I personally, I'm, nobody is sure, obviously. So, so, you're, you, so, so you, think, you think it's possible that rapamycin would have no muscle building benefit effects? I think it has none at all, for sure. Ah, yeah. wow, okay. I mean, I've taken it a lot. I, I really have felt this feeling of the mTOR being shut down for extended periods after stopping it. Mm. And this is not a good feeling. You, you feel it in the brain. But I'm sure if I was weightlifting, I would have felt it also in the body. Mm. So besides mTOR and besides insulin, there's a lot of other pathways. There may be even pathways that science, scientists don't even understand no, that regulate muscle growth. So it's possible. I mean, we're all just speculating here, but it's possible Coach Trevor is right but it's not necessarily the mTOR pathway resensitizing that, that causes the muscle building rebound that we see after a fast. And it's possible it's not just insulin sensitivity because there's a lot of things we yeah, can do to increase lot. insulin sensitivity besides fasting. So for a bodybuilder who wants to be as sensitive to muscle growth as possible, there's things they could do besides fasting to do that, which is another great topic. Like what can the bodybuilder do besides fasting to resensitize themselves? on all the different muscle growth pathways to be able to grow as much muscle as fast as possible. Because the whole point is, yes, you can redline everything and you can grow, but when your body starts resisting you, that's when side effects go up and that's where you have to work so much harder at muscle growth. And what I like to do is get the body into a state where muscle growth is easy, where fat loss is easy. Because the reason I got into this whole thing in the first place was I was tired of my natural bodybuilder body being so high maintenance. I wanted to build a physique that was low maintenance. So if I want to lose fat fast, boom, I can. I want to build muscle fast, boom, I can. So anything that increases your metabolic rate, like, or removes fat from the liver through the metabolic rate, 
So clenbuterol, thyroid hormone, growth hormone, all of those things insulin sensitize you initially. Growth hormone later will make you insulin resistant. But that's why those things work. So for example, when people are prepping for a competition, they don't really need to take that many breaks. One of the reasons is that they're taking thyroid hormone, clenbuterol, they're insulin sensitive, they don't have fat on their liver, and so on. But to be honest with you, I don't think that there's really a pharmacologic hack that is similar to fasting. You know, that's why I fast. Otherwise, I don't have an issue with drugs. Obviously. Because when we're fasting, we're affecting so many pathways. We're swinging the pendulum back on pathways we don't even know what they are yet or haven't identified them. So if there's 10 different pathways that get resensitized, refreshed, or reset by, by fasting, we have supplements that can do maybe five out of those 10 pathways. And some of those pathways we haven't even identified. You know. Yeah, but and bi biostatin is another one along these lines. Yeah, myostatin is poorly understood. But by the way, mechanistic target of rapamycin is also not well understood. I mean, the research on it is really in its infancy. It's very complicated, and it has such a primal base in our bodies, and how it affects different other downstream pathways is not fully understood. You know, so this is all, all the research is on its infancy still. And that's why it's fun to discuss and learn and experiment on ourselves and report to you guys what we find. Be swollen, swollen friends of freedom, pioneers of human evolution, subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments below if you think we're crazy people.